How a romance novel save the galaxy by Ariana Daralte. Chapter 44. Femur 6. Vimor used the force to swing himself up into the spaceport's ducts. Madame knew had left him a message while he was on the transport for Mandalore, saying that one of her former students would send a transport to pick him up here. They were in Hangar 70, waiting for him to arrive. The trouble was that he'd seen at least four Mandalorians just stepping off the ship. It had been pure luck that he'd been able to disembark without being spotted. But there were more lurking across the whole place port. Some seemed to recently arrive from Mandalore, while others were guild bounty hunters. He took a moment in those dusty ducks to just press his forehead against the cool metal. Master Dooku had sent him a comm as well, saying he might have some Mandalorians on his tail for the thrill of the chase. Fimor had been hoping that wasn't the case. Sith hells, he should have stopped to consult the Force if this was a good idea, but he'd been so freaked out by all the sympathy and interest after the solitude of a Jedi Watchman. Fimor took a deep breath, released his dismay to the Force, and kept moving. What was done was done. The ductwork got him within about 20 miles of his destination, but he'd have to exit them to make that last distance. He checked with the Force. No one was around. Nonetheless, he used the Force to remove the grate so it wouldn't make a sound and drop silently to the floor. I think you'd have been better off traveling via the roofs, said a modulated voice behind him. He turned. Shit, he'd forgotten to scan deeper so he could sense best guard. The bounty hunter had a golden braided rope hanging from the right shoulder and a yellow-brown cape over black armor with silver accents. An enormous pulse rifle was slung over their back, and few more sharp eyes could see at least five more weapons on the bounty hunter. Is the bounty out on me? He asked, keeping his voice calm. The bounty hunter shook his head. No, just a friendly wager among men the body. Wonder which I'm going to win. They pulled off their calm link, which was attached to one of their gauntlets, then started to move towards him. He startled Dan going to his lightsaber. Don't stare me, Jerry. I just want to holler with you. Actually, you can light that up and pose with it if you want. Fimor stared blankly at them as they came to stand beside him, holding the cam up so they could take a hollow of the two of them standing next to each other. Sure you don't want to pose? Teased the man, though. No! The bounty had a chuckle. I'll win the bet either way. You've got a clear path to Hangar 70 if you go within the next few minutes. You had wagered to see who could catch up with me first, wondered Fimor. The bounty hunter nodded sharply. Everyone was saying it would be a challenge after you gave the hotman Dewande the slip, but I'm one of the best bounty hunters in the sector, and I went to be nearby. I actually have a real hunt to get back to. Later, Jetty. They stalked away. After a moment, Fimor made his cautious way to Hangar 70 to catch his transport. His decisions on Mandalore had made this mission much more complicated. It didn't help when he reached Hangar 70 and found an inconspicuously dressed person with amber skin and laugh lines around brown eyes waiting at the door. My briefing said you wanted to go undercover, Edika. They raised one disapproving eyebrow. This is not undercover on your part. Femur sighed. You're the Mandalorian the Mandalore is saying to me. They pulled back their long sleeves to reveal a Beskar vambrace painted green. After pressing a few buttons, a display of text popped up showing they were Kirtan Tosa of Clan Tosa House Wren. In addition, they pulled out a data chip and handed it to Fimor. These are my files and orders from the Mandalore, so you can check I'm not some rando. The Force had already assured Fimor that they were who they said they were, but he did appreciate the thought. Thank you! Let's get to the ship before anyone else spots us! Jetty, or at least his Jetty, had no sense of shame about being naked in front of others, it seemed. Once he had his own robes off, Yam helped Kiri strip down her underclothes. Nared absent-mindedly started to remove his own armor, unable to tear his eyes away from Yam's beauty. The muscles in the Jetty's arms were lean but well-defined, showing off years of martial training and also that he was rather dehydrated. Fortunately, his jetty was sensible enough to lead Kiri over to one of the cooler pools to get a drink before they headed to a hotter one whose water was a brilliant blue. Now, Red was very glad he hadn't managed to remove the bottom half of his under armor at that point because he'd forgotten one key thing. They didn't have any soap. So Yam had splashed water on his legs and was showing Kiri how to rub handfuls of sand along them. 
He was facing away from Nored, so his back and bare shafts were visible in all their glory. Oh, 